In the context of programmable logic controllers, process image refers to the representation of PLC input signals data, output data, and internal data. It is essentially a snapshot of the PLC's input, output, and internal data. Here is a sketch of the PLC memory. The data is represented in the form of bytes, starting from byte number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. A total of 8 bytes. This is just an example in order to make you guys understand the concept of PLC process image. Suppose we have the PLC as 7 1200 that has the memory like this. It has 8 digital input channels, 8 digital output channels, 1 analog input channel, 1 analog output channel and 2 bytes of memory. Before getting into the detail of the PLC process image, let's recall the PLC architecture and its working. This is a typical PLC architecture. The central processing unit continuously reads the data that is coming from the input modules, while the input modules are interfaced with various sensors and switches. After reading the data, the central processing unit processes the data according to the PLC program stored in the memory and then it updates the output modules data by sending signals to various motors and actuators through the output modules. Over here in the memory, the PLC process image lies. In this process image, the status of all the input data that is coming from the input modules and the data that has to go to the output modules plus the data of the program is stored in the memory, which we refer to as internal memory. Because in the PLC program, we have timers, counters, and we also have some memory bits in memory bytes. So collectively in the memory, we have a snapshot of input data, output data, and PLC's internal data. That representation, that collective representation of the entire PLC data is what we call as PLC process image. Now let's get back to where we have come from. Since in this typical example of a 7 1200 PLC, we have eight digital inputs. So the data that is the digital data that range, ranges from I 0.0, .0 to I 0.7 that is stored in this first byte is allocated for the digital data of the, these eight digital inputs. Since we have eight digital outputs, the data that range from Q1.0 to Q1.7, this space is allocated for eight digital outputs. Now, since we have one analog input channel, these two bytes, which we can address as IW2, is allocated for the data coming from the analog input channel. One analog output channel, well, these two bytes, byte 4 and byte 5, these are allocated for the one analog output channel data, Q, W, 4. We address it as 4 because the byte starts from 4 and ends at 5. Similarly, we address it as 2 because it starts from byte 2. Well, word, as you may be familiar, is comprised of 16 bits or 2 bytes. Last but not the least, these 2 bytes are allocated for memory bits or memory bytes. So if we want to use it as in digital form, we can start from M6.0 and we can end at M7.7. If we use all of the 16 bits as a digital memory data. Here is the representation of the PLC process image. It has allocations for in input data, output data, and memory data. This brings us to the conclusion that the process image data can be divided as input process image, output process image, and internal data. In this case, the internal data is that of the data that is stored in memory bits. In this case, the internal data refers to the memory bits. It can also store the data 
of the PLC timers, counters, or any virtual data that we may use in our PLC program. All these data will be stored in the PLC, PLC process image as PLC's internal data. The conclusion is the PLC process image is the representation of the entire PLC's data. And if you want to further divide the PLC process image into various categories, it can be classified as input process image, output process image, and internal data process image. The input process image stores the data coming from input modules. It can be digital, it can be analog. The output process image stores the data that has to be sent to the output modules. It can be digital, it can be analog. While the internal data, it stores the memory, timers, counters, or any virtual data used in PLC program. So this is the explanation of the PLC process image. It is important to understand that the PLC process image is updated with every PLC scan cycle. The CPU of the PLC reads data from the input modules that is coming from the sensors and switches, updates the input process image. Also, it processes the data to generate outputs and updates the output process image. Also, it keeps on updating the process image with the internal data of the program. For more videos about PLC programming, and troubleshooting semantic PCS7 process control systems, please subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.